Hi, we're going to continue with option D and we are going to talk about now about how are drugs and medicines developed, how are they discovered, and how are they brought to market, and how this uh, research is done um, in order to develop the ideas of uh, therapeutic window and what are the therapeutic doses that we need to be using uh, for drugs and medicines, okay? So let's go ahead and start directly, all right? Um, drugs are normally discovered by the search of a natural product, okay, normally, that um, has some type of biological activity. So um, there's a lot of people who are constantly looking through plants and sometimes marine organisms, uh, this happens a lot in Japan, by the way, um, where they take different substances and they purify them and then they test them. Now, those first natural products are called lead compounds because they set the direction in which we are going to be looking for the structure of a chemical compound, all right? Now, uh, those lead compounds, if they are promising, if they are tested and they seem to have some chemical activity, if they have some uh, structural motifs that we're interested in, we are going to go ahead and make uh, synthetic uh, derivatives and analogs, all right? So we're going to be doing this by doing organic chemistry and we are going to, um, one of the things that we do is we use uh, new modern uh, methodologies such as combinatorial chem chemistry in which we can create a large library of uh, compounds that are based on the same uh, structure. And so we can change some of the little things about it and that can make the bonding of that compound into a particular cell receptor uh, higher or uh, lower and that may actually increase or decrease the activity and so give us the desired effect, all right? Now those derivatives, all of those a library of compounds are uh, tested uh, through some um, new methods as well, uh, such as high throughput uh, screening, which uses uh, ELISA testing, for example, uh, where we have an antibi uh, antibody which will bond to a particular structure. Now we want that antibody to have perhaps the shape of the receptor in the um, in the cell that actually will trigger the action that we want. So this is one of the things that we can do. Obviously, we can do this uh, also through, through other methodologies, and those are going to be seen uh, in stage two. So, so what if if something if a chemical is known to have some um, promising uh, characteristics, we're then going to move into uh, stage two, all right? And stage two is the development uh, research. And so here, we're going to look at those, we're gonna um, computer model them, all right? To be able to see them three-dimensionally and try to mimic how they will interact with uh, certain target um, receptors. Now, this is not um, something that we can do fully yet because uh, the living organism is too complex and there are too many other aspects in there, not just a target, but there are so many other receptors in the body that we need to test. And so uh, we do in vitro testing. In vitro testing is done sometimes with, uh, as I said, as anti antibodies, but it also can be done with uh, tissues, all right? And then we are going to move on, once we have selected some that are even more promising, we're going to move into in vivo studies, and those include uh, animal testing. Again, this is uh, one of these areas where we, we put a TOK hats, uh, we took, put our internationalism hats, our ethics hats on to discuss, and definitely um, we want to move away from animal testing, but we do not have a uh, model right now that can substitute for that, all right? And so this is uh, where the, the, the current um, technology uh, has limited to us, but hopefully we can um, evolve from that, all right? After we have done the initial testing for um, uh, safety, all right, in animal trials, then we move into what are called clinical trials, human clinical trials, all right? And so those are going to be in three phases, and they determine both efficacy, sorry, all three things, efficacy, dosage, and the side effects, okay? So phase one, funnily enough, all right, is done uh, on healthy uh, 
volunteers. And the reality is the only reason we do that testing is to see if there are any side effects. You do not want to give a medicine to somebody who is in poor health that will cause uh, even worse side effects. All right. And so we want to do that. We do this normally on a, a, on a healthy population uh, after it has been tested again for safety uh, on other types of trials. Phase two, all right, uh, we have our um, population, a small population of test subjects that actually have the condition, whichever it, the condition happens to be that we want to treat. And uh, we're going to test them for efficacy and for dosage, all right, how much, how large is the dose needed uh, in order to be um, uh, efficient or, you know, effective, all right, so to have the therapeutic effects. Then uh, phase three, we're going to have a much larger group. We're going to uh, move into uh, multiple hundred of people, sometimes even a thousand, two thousand people, uh, in order to get some statistically relevant, relevant data on dosage and efficacy. We're going to have um, more age groups, uh, genders, uh, ethnicities, all of these kinds of things that may have or not an effect on how uh, well the drug actually works. All right. Through all three, three phases, phase one, two, and three, we're going to be also testing the placebo effect, all right? Uh, and we'll be discussing that in just a moment. But the most important test for placebo is done in phase three because this is where we have the larger population, all right? So uh, there are two effects. Uh, we normally tend to hear only about the placebo effect, but there is a placebo and the nocebo effect, okay? And the placebo effect is all of those perceived benefits, all right, that can happen because we believe that the drug is going to be beneficial, all right, that what you are receiving is beneficial. So this can actually have a psychological or a physiological effect even if you have an inert substance given to you. So for example, if you are given a pill, it's a sugar pill, and you believe it's a, an aspirin and your headache goes away, that is a placebo effect. If you are given an injection, all right, and your blood pressure goes down because you thought that it was an injection that will lower your blood pressure, that is a placebo effect, all right? The nocebo effect is instead the opposite. It's when you have a negative effect on you or you disactivate the drug because you do not, you think that the drug is going to be toxic or because you think that the drug is not going to work. The most common um, way that people think of the nocebo effect, uh, and it's not for a drug, but it's, it's still, uh, it really gives, it, it illustrates it quite well, is that yeah, if being bitten by a snake, a non-poisonous snake, but you think the snake is poisonous, and therefore you start uh, having swelling, or you start having tachycardia, like a rush in your, in your heart, or anything like that, uh, because of that, which may have just been a little garden snake that bit you, all right? So that's an example of this, all right? This is how the mind can affect how our body works, all right? Uh, because of this, because of the placebo effect and the nocebo effect, we do, uh, uh, all of these clinical trials are generally done in what is called a double-blind test where neither the doctor who's administering the drug nor the patient knows whether they're getting drug or an inert substance, all right? Only the pharmacist knows, uh, and the pharmacist is the one that gives it to the doctor. So that way, we can actually see that the doctors are not influencing how they see a patient that they think got the drug or not. So it's, it's a little bit more of a, a, a fair playing field, if you, if you may say so. Uh, to try to check whether the drug has an effect or not, all right? The next stage, stage three, is when we actually uh, apply, when, when the uh, pharmaceutical companies apply for uh, a permission to be able to sell this drug, all right? And this is done by, uh, this is authorized by government uh, entities like the Food and Drug Administration here in the U.S. Uh, there are other entities around the world who are careful about taking all of that information, all right? and um, they're going to decide whether the information from the clinical trials is sufficient and actually says 
that uh, we have the right information. Here is where they are looking at those tests uh, from animal trials, uh, from clinical trials, and to see does this have a, a good therapeutic window? Is it a wide therapeutic window? Are we going to allow this to be sold over the counter or is it much more regulated? Does it have so many side effects that we really need to have this be much more regulated or is it so addictive that we are going to regulate and only allow this drug to be sold when a doctor prescribes it? So those are the kind of things that are going to be taking place in stage three. All right. And finally, stage four, those uh, same... Um, Governmental, uh, governmental uh, agencies are going to be um, monitoring what the drug does. Uh, there have been many cases in which drugs have been approved initially because we thought that they were going to be safe. And in fact, uh, we find later on that there has been a problem. And so the drug gets recalled, gets removed from um, um, the market because it is toxic. One of the most famous examples of this is a drug that was uh, called thalidomide. Thalidomide um, was used for um, as an anti-vomitive, all right? So basically it helped uh, pregnant women with their um, morning sickness. The problem is that it in fact had a very significant uh, side effect that caused deformities on the fetus and the babies that were born were born with um, some real significant physical um, deformities. And so when that was uh, found out, that was immediately uh, removed from the market. All right. So there is something out there trying to protect us. Uh, the government in this particular case has agencies and uh, drug companies, of course, are also interested in being able to sell drugs that are not going to have harmful, harmful effects on um, their patients because overall, you know, you, that's going to cost a lot more money than not selling that drug. Um, okay, so with that, we're going to close our introduction into medicinal chemistry, and we will uh, start talking more about uh, the other sets of drugs. All right, thank you.